Alright, we're good now. Yeah. yeah. Well, the song Holy Hotty Toddy came from uh, uh, an hour from where I live, which is Tupelo, Mississippi, is a town called Oxford. And in Oxford, uh, when they greet people on the street, they don't say hello, they say Hotty Toddy, because it's an old Miss thing. And you know, it's, it's just, uh, I looked it up and it said, all things Oxford. And it also said a greeting. And I like that, I'm, I'm an all-inclusive guy and I like to greet people. And, I'm, uh, I'll take anybody in except mean people, you know? Right. So, <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I just made up this silly course. It says, holy, hotty, tidy, good God almighty, love everybody. It's real sing-along, and it's just about uh, being all-inclusive and, and, you know, and realizing how short life is. And, and when I play this song live, by the second course, the whole crowd's singing along. It's become a big part of my show. And, uh, it's just, uh, I mean, I guess Hotty Todd is, uh, it's good. It's just good in all kinds of ways. Well, uh, a, a, few, a couple years ago, before the pandemic, uh, the state of Mississippi declared March 26th Paul Thorne Day. I got a day uh, for my contribution to the arts, and I went uh, to the Capitol building, and they, they gave me a, you know, a trophy and all that kind of stuff. And it was nice to get recognized like that. But this person named Daryl Markle, who was a guitar luthier, unbeknownst to me, built me a guitar to give as a gift for me winning uh, this award, you know. 
And uh, he handed it to me and it was shaped like Mississippi. And, uh, but it didn't have any artwork on it. It was just a blank piece of wood shaped like Mississippi. And uh, at first when I picked it up, I thought, well, this you know, it's probably not a good guitar. It's just something I can hang on the wall and tell my friends about. But I, still, I picked it up and I played it and I felt, I mean, it was, it was just a really great guitar. It was, uh, no expense was uh, spared on the details of it and making it right. And I started just playing it on stage with nothing on it, just a blank piece of wood. And then uh, everybody encouraged me because I do artwork to uh, do a piece of art on the, on the guitar. And I couldn't think of what to draw on it. And I thought, I, I don't want to draw like the crossroads and all that, you know, really predictable stuff about Mississippi and you know, all that kind of Robert Johnson going down to, down to the crossroad road to, tell, to sell his t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> But anyway, so I draw. I drew the thing that's most important to my career, and that's the fans. And if you on the picture on the front, it it shows people like they're all looking at something. And in my mind, that's the that's what I see every night. I see people, all different types of people, just standing out there coming to the show. They bought a ticket, and uh, you know they they got a babysitter, and they they shower and put on a good shirt to go to a Paul Thorne show. And if that did, if those people didn't exist, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a career. And so uh, uh, I drew my fans because at the end of the day, they, uh, they what keeps my children uh, in supply, in good chicken nugget supply, you know. <laughs> Most of them showered. Yeah. yeah, but I'm proud of it. And we actually we made a, a limited edition of 25 of these things, and they sold just like that. And uh, I'm actually in the process of doing a second Mississippi guitar, but it's gonna have different artwork on it. And I'm, I'm working on the artwork for that one right now. Yeah. Well, my dad's a Pentecostal preacher, so I have to give all credit to that experience because uh, in, a, in a Pentecostal church, uh, the music is fantastic. Uh, they had two types of churches when I was growing up. Uh, the, we had the churches where the white people attended, and they had churches where the black people attended. And it wasn't because we were against each other, it was just we had a different style of everything. Like in the, in the, in the white churches, they played like country western gospel. It sounded like country western, but gospel lyrics. And in the black churches, it sounded like rhythm and blues with gospel lyrics. And so I had the benefit of getting to go to both churches all my life, because we'd go visit each other's churches. And I got everything I got from going to church and, and learning how to play at the black church and the white church. Not unlike one of my hometown boys, Elvis Presley. You know, he grew up in the same town I grew up in, Tupelo, same town. He actually even attended some of the exact churches I attended. And so I benefited from uh, the tutorship of, of the church experience. And uh, it was way back before, you know, contemporary gospel and all that came in. It was old school gospel with you know, out of the hymn book, you know, and it's, it had a spirit to it that I, I don't feel much when I listen to modern gospel music. No disrespect. <laughs> it's just not for me. I like the old stuff. I have to put John Prine at the very top, you know, uh, and I, I was fortunate that I was, I was friends with John. Uh, he was, I, I, I opened up probably, I don't know, 30 shows for John. And, uh, and his songs are, are very simple and he can barely play the guitar, he can barely sing, but the words that comes out of his mouth and the way he puts you in a pic, he paints a picture with a song so vivid. And so there's so much empathy in his writing. And, um, and uh, you know, one of the nights I opened for him on the first, that was the first night I ever opened for him. After the show, he didn't know me from Adam, but he invited me and the crew, not the fancy people, the crew that was, you know, tearing down the stuff. He invited us all to his hotel room to eat ice cream. And so we went to his hotel room and we're sitting, so I'm sitting there eating ice cream with John Prine, for, you know, just trying to act like I wasn't starstruck. And, uh, and I was so excited that I got to, that I had that experience. And the next morning, I got on Facebook and I wrote, y'all, I can't believe it. I had ice cream with John Prine last night. And then instantly I got a call from his manager. 
And he said, man, what are you doing? I said, well, nothing. I was just talking about what happened. He said he has sugar diabetes. He said his wife is going to kill him. If, he, if she finds out that he's been eating ice cream, I was like, oh, God, like that. And so, <laughs> and so I, got, I got him in trouble with his wife. And then the last time I saw him, the last time I saw John Prine, I was in the Dominican Republic. They had a, 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 all the best. They call it the all the best festival. And it was different songwriters, and John Prine was the main guy. And so uh, uh, when I... When John came walking up to the stage, we were all doing a tribute where we were going to all do a John Prine song, and he was going to be there as the honorary guy and everything. But I swear, man, when he walked, when he walked from wherever he came from to where the stage was, it literally, it, it, it felt like, it sounds like a stretch, but it was like Jesus walking up because when he started walking up and he's all frail and he's got, you know, he's got, he had cancer, and like whole throat been cut out and everything. But when he's just like barely walking, man, the people just let, they just like went back like the water in the ocean when in the Bible, that story was just, they were just saw in all of him. And he went and he sat back behind the stage because he was, then he's running out of gas big time in life, you know. And uh, so uh, I, I had just, I was just getting ready to record a new record, and there was a song on there that uh, it was a guy, a song for two guys to sing, and I just walked up to him and I was talking. And the first thing he said before he said anything, he said, "He says, hey Paul, anything? I, you need anything? I, can I get? Can I get you anything?" He was like, he was acting like he was like serving me, you know, and he was just amazing. I said, "No, I'm all good, man." I said, "I said, but I do got a song. Uh, uh, I want you to sing with me on my new record." And he goes, all right, whatever you want. He said, whatever you want. And then I had to go out and sing. And that was the last time I spoke to him because after the Dominican Republic, uh, he, had, he fell and he broke his hip. And then after that, he got COVID and died. And, uh, but what a light that guy was, man. And, uh, dear Rabbi, dear Rabbi, my feet are too long. My hair's falling out and my rights are all wrong. Every side I get up on is the wrong side of bed If it weren't too expensive, I wish I were dead Sign, bewildered <laughs> Isn't that great? Was that enough? All right. One other fact about John Prine the world needs to know he, His favorite ice cream was Neapolitan And he didn't like the chocolate but instead of buying some uh, strawberry and vanilla, and went, he would scoop the chocolate out. He would take the chocolate out and just eat the vanilla and the strawberry. But that's too much work for me. Yeah, eat around that. <laughs> and it wastes ice cream. <laughs> yeah. just, uh...